So in this recording, we're going to look at early and modern numeration systems. And you might be asking yourself, why is this a topic that I have to learn about? And it's because as we understand num numeracy numbers, it's important to see the evolution of it. And in doing the types of problems that you're going to do in this section, it's going to be built on skills that are applicable later on in algebra. So we're going to look at the tally system. We're going to work on grouping. We're going to use the multiplicative grouping systems. We're going to find a positional system to work with place value, and we're going to use numeration systems that combine other types of systems. So this is basically a skill building activity with a little bit of a history lesson, so you get that interdisciplinary feel. So a number is really a concept that represents a quantity. So that's why every language has different use for numbers, but each number is related to an actual quantity in the real world. A numeral, on the other hand, is a symbol that's used to represent a number. So some languages only have symbols that represent number, numbers, as we're going to see. A numeration symbol is a set of symbols that represent numbers and a set of rules for combining those symbols. So if you think about it, just it's overwhelming to think about a hundred numerals in a number system. So it should make sense that there has to be some type of pattern for combining those symbols so that you can get to those higher numbers without having to memorize an insane number of symbols. So a tally system is the simplest kind of numeration system. Um, it's also the oldest one. And a tally symbol, there's only one symbol needed and a number is represented by repeating that symbol. So most often they keep track of things like an event. So we tend to make a tally of every time someone buys a lemonade or we make a tally for every time someone does an action. So the most common symbol is just that little, um, I guess we'll call it a slash, uh, which we call a stroke. And then tallies are usually grouped in five with the fifth stroke crossing the first four diagonally like you see in the bottom of the picture. So if I'm using the tally system, then I can use this example with the emergency room and there were six patients before her first break. So I'm gonna do a tally of six. So one, two, three, four slashes, fifth one goes diagonal and then one remaining slash. Then I have to add eight slashes to that and then I have to add four during the afternoon. Now that I've tallied all that up, I count five, 10, 15, and I get 18 patients. So the tally system is very effective here. Um, if we were trying to draw a diagram, it would just take too long and I don't need to actually draw a patient. So I can definitely use a tally system. And a simple grouping system, there are symbols that represent certain numbers. So often these are powers of 10. To write a number in a grouping system, you repeat the symbol that represents the value until you get the desired quantity. So the Egyptians are a great example of this. So they have the slash is one, they have the upside down U is 10, then 100, then 1,000. And then we have those different descriptions. Um, and then 10,000, 100,000, and a million have those other symbols. So this was developed about 5,000 years ago and it used the system of pictures or hieroglyphics and we d designated certain symbols. So if I'm looking to find the numerical value of each Egyptian numeral in this problem, I'm going to need to use the table up here along with the symbols to determine what is going on. So what does this actually look like? So if I have a number is made up of three fish, which means 300,000. So that's three times 100,000 or 100,000 plus 100,000 plus 100,000. I have three pointing fingers, which is three ten thousand. So I could do three times 10,000 or I could add 10,000 three times. Two scrolls, which would be two one hundreds, three heel bones, which would be three times 10, and six vertical staffs. So I'm gonna find the value for each one of those symbols and I'm going to add it up to get a total of 330,236. Now what's interesting here is basically I just did place value. So three times 100,000 is 300,000. So my place value in the 100,000s is three. So this is gonna relate heavily to place value. So in the um, problem, if you go back up for part B, 
I'm going to take these symbols and I'm going to do the same thing. I have one million, I have two thousands, I have one one hundred and one one. So I have the million plus two thousand plus one hundred plus ten plus one. And so that is going to be the answer. Now what's interesting about this is that this is going to be expanded form. So why are we learning about this for students? Because we're teaching them to write expanded form in a fun way. So the first number in part C requires 17 symbols. That's a lot of symbols. It's much easier to write the number. So we're thankful for how we've evolved over time for sure. And um, six, so it's 17 to six. And the second one needs six symbols, but seven in R. So sometimes the Egyptian symbol requires more symbols to be written, but that's not a hard and fast rule. So this time we're gonna take the number and we're gonna write it as an Egyptian numeral. So again, I'm gonna write this out in expanded form. So I'm gonna have, two, I have two one hundreds, I have three tens and seven ones. So I'm gonna put two symbols for the hundreds three symbols for the tens and seven for the ones. And so basically I'm taking the expanded form and I'm writing it in the normal form of 137, but I have the extra added benefit of learning a little bit of history as I look at the Egyptian hieroglyphics. And then I'm gonna repeat the same thing with 3,200,000, um, sorry, 202,419. I'm gonna take that number I'm gonna write it out in expanded form. So I have three millions, two hundred thousands, two thousands, and then I'm gonna match the correlating symbol. So I've taken that number, I've written it out in expanded form, I understand place value because I know there's a three in the millions place, a two in the hundred thousands place. And so we're really building that skill up here. Um, now if I wanna start doing some, some arithmetic with our Egyptian numeration, I'm gonna combine some skills. So in order to do that, I'm going to find the total number from each total number of each symbol and I'm going to see if I can combine them because I have an awful lot of some of these symbols. So if I look at the upside down tens, I have a group of 10 tens, which is really just another hundred. And if I look at the slashes, there's 10 of the slashes so I can convert that over into a 10. And so basically I'm grouping items and then I'm simplifying their place value and carrying. So essentially I'm carrying over like in a typical addition problem, the remainders. And when I do that, I get a final answer here. And then I'm able to take that final answer and relate that to a number. So I get the um, one, two, three, the four tens, and then the ten heel bones with one scroll. So I can replace that with my answer. So that's how I did the addition. Now in part B, it's pretty difficult to subtract with the symbols because um, we don't have the equivalent of carrying over here. So with this problem, what we can do is kind of match up what we can. I know these cancel out, these three cancel out, these three remain here, these cancel out, and then I have these remaining. And so that would be my final answer because I can't, I can't borrow like I typically borrow. So when I'm looking at this, I can't have nothing here. So I'm going to have to borrow from this symbol and I'm gonna have to care, put it here, and I'm same thing over here, I'm gonna have to borrow from this symbol because I can't do nothing minus those hash marks. So this is a little bit more intricate because I'm having to convert the tens into 10 slashes, and then I'm having to convert the hundreds into 10 tens so that I can then do the subtraction. Roman numerals are also incredibly popular. Uh, most of us are familiar on some level with Roman numerals. And so the Roman numeral system is a variation of grouping system. It's slightly more condensed than hieroglyphics and it helps us keep from repeating any symbol more than three times. So for example, eight is written as V11, so which is a five plus three ones, but nine, instead of writing it as the VIIII, I write it as 
10 minus 1, basically, the ix. So if you haven't seen a lot of the Roman numeral system, it's worth a quick Google and a YouTube check. So when a letter is repeatedly written next to each other, it's adding it. So I get 10 plus 10 plus 10, which would be 30. Um, when I'm looking at smaller value letters followed by a larger value letter, like LXVI, that's 50 plus 10 plus 5 plus 1, or 66. So it's only when the smaller value comes in front that I'm doing that subtraction. So when the example of that would be IV would be 5 minus 1 because 1, the I symbol, is less than the V, the 5 symbol. So when the lesser symbol comes first, you have to subtract. In addition, that I can only go in front of the 5 or the 10 symbol um, because that's not, we can't write, I don't know, we, we can't write something with it in front of a very large number. So 4 is IV, 9 is IX, 40 would be XL because I would have that, um, that symbol XL for the preceding. 90 is written as XC, 400 is written as CD, and 900 is written as CM. So if I want to find the value of each of these Roman numerals, I can basically find their corresponding values and then I'm determining, okay, am I adding them all up or is there any smaller number in front of a larger number? And so that's what you're doing here is just taking each symbol and so in part B, X, C, X is smaller than C as far as symbols go, so I have to do 100 minus 10 because X is 10, C is 100. Anytime the smaller number comes first, you have to do that subtraction. So then how would I convert between our number system and the Roman numerals? So the way I would do that is 19 would be a 10 plus a 9. So basically you're writing this in expanded form. 238 would be 200, 30, and 8 in expanded form. So I have 2 C's, 3 tens, 8 ones. So again, I'm really teaching students place value without them even catching on. In a multiplicative grouping system, there's a symbol for each value from 1 to 9 and also for other select numbers. If I want to represent 40, that's 4, 10. So these symbolic numbers, num <laughs> number systems do a much better job of teaching place value than when we do it in English because the, it's like, why am I writing expanded form? It's just tedious. This gives a fun way to do expanded form. So here I have symbols used in a grouping system as shown on the right. If I want to write symbols that would be used to represent 68 and 1950, I would have to figure out how do the number of symbols needed compare to the number needed in Roman numerals. Well, in order to know that, I'm going to have to do the pattern, so I'm going to have to figure it out. So in this situation, I can write things as multiplication. So I would have 1 times 1,000. So I'd have the symbol for 1 times 1,000, and this is why it's called the multiplicative grouping system, plus I have 9 100s, so instead of writing 109 times, I'm going to write 9 next to the symbol for 100 because that's implying multiplication. And, and if I have 5 tens, instead of saying 5 tens and drawing the symbol out 5 times, I'm going to take the symbol for 5 and write it next to the symbol for 10. So once I see this out, I see that it's really nice because it's reducing, it's reducing some of the number, number of symbols. So I would have needed six and four symbols. So it doesn't necessarily appear to do it in this problem, but if I did do this a couple of times, I suspect we would find that I would need less symbols than other systems and similar to what I have in the U.S. So the symbols used for the Chinese number system are shown on the right. Because Chinese is written vertically instead of horizontally, their numbers are also represented vertically. So again, we get a nice, a nice lesson as we're learning about place value that's related to history. So if I want to find the value of each Chinese numeral, I'm going to identify what does each symbol mean. So it's a grouping system. So if I have a 6 above 100, that's 6 times 100. 
If I have a five above a 10, that's five times 10, and then I have four ones, so I have 654. This is a multiplication grouping problem. So I'm taking the groups of two symbols, I'm multiplying their values that they equate to from the table, and then I'm adding them up. So if I um, wanna take and convert over some numerals from our number system into Chinese, I'm gonna think of 65 as six times 10, because I have six tens in the place value, and five ones is just the symbol for ones, the, or the symbol for fives. If I look at part B, I have 183, so that's one 100, eight tens, and three ones. So I would write it as one times 100, eight times 10, because I have eight tens, and then three. So it's very helpful for us to be able to see that as we're moving into those numerical grouping systems. In a positional system, instead of writing the multiplier with another number to multiply it by, we write the multiplier alone. So this sounds a little bit like our number system, right? So the numerous system you grew up with is what we call a positional system, because I need 10 symbols. So the digits zero through nine can be used in co different combinations to represent any number. So this system is a bit nicer because I'm able to get away with a little bit less. So exponential expressions are basically the foundational skill that the, pa the position system teaches us. So when we're teaching students this, it's like, why am I doing this? Well, we're doing this to help them really grasp and understand um, exponents. So for any exponential I have, b to the n is taking those numbers and multiplying them out n times. And the number b is called the base. The number um, n would be the exponent. So b to the one is b, and b to the zero is one. So these are important exponent properties you need to keep in mind. The Hindu era, Arabic system um, is a positional system, and place value in this system is given by powers of 10. So the number 82,653, if I write this out in expanded form, would be eight ten thousands, two thousand, six hundreds, five tens, and three ones. So I can discern from that expanded form what each place value is. So what does this actually look like in a problem? So if I wanna go from these numbers into their number system, I'm just gonna write out the expanded form. So instead of having to make up symbols that represent certain numbers, I'm just gonna use the digits. So 84 would be eight tens, four ones. Um, four thousands would be four, one thousand, nine hundreds, one ten, and two ones. So we're writing it out as that multiplicative grouping system, same as we did with Chinese, but this time we have numerals that we're utilizing. Expanded notation is typically called expanded form in the secondary and elementary curriculums. So I basically, this entire lesson, have been teaching you how to write things in expanded form. So the base 10 system um, is, the, is basically the Hindu Arab, Arabic system. Um, our system is also base 10. And so base 10 numbers are easier to work with because they have things like 9 million 34,761, and when I write it out in expanded form, it's really nice because I have 9 million, which could be written as 9 times 1 million, 30,000, 3 times 10. So you see all the powers of 10 as you write this out in the multiplication expanded form. And what I can do is replace those powers of 10 with their exponential notation. So instead of writing a million, that's 10 to the six. Instead of writing um, 10,000, that's 10 to the fourth power and so on. So basically that's why we call this system base 10 because I can rewrite any number utilizing powers of 10 in that multiplication grouping. So there's a couple of slides here about the history and the evolution of number systems. I'll let you guys pause this and read this on your own. 
And then we also have some examples where we're able to pull from that number system. So the Babylonian number system is a less used example system. Typically we stick to um, Egyptian, Chinese, um, but what's interesting is I can work with this number system just like the other one. So I have three 10 symbols and six one symbols, so it's 36. So this is no different than the other problems that we've been working with. It's just a different symbol system. What's interesting about it is it's also a positional system and it's actually in base 60. Numbers 1 to 59 are written using the two symbols shown in example 12. But after 60, a space is left between the groups. So that space tells me it's the next base 60. So instead of thinking of powers of 10, I have to think of powers of 60 to be able to write this out. So this is more visible in this example as I write the powers out. So I have 52 times 60 and 34 times 1, which gives me 3,154. So if I look at this first set of symbols, this is going to be 52. So this is my tens place. This is my ones place. So that's how I'm arriving at, instead of 10, it's 60, and then my ones are just ones. So same thing here, this would be ones, plain old ones, sorry, and then this would be 60, and this would be 60 squared. So it's the same thing we normally do, but I have to figure out what is this number times 60 squared plus what is this number times 60. And so that's how we're coming up with those answers. And so why would I want to show my students a different base system? Well, again, the whole thing with the base system is that we're working to teach them about place value and to do a better job with place value. And it also teaches them about exponents because now I have to know exponents of 60. So if I want to take that problem and I want to work it out, 3,600 is going to be 60 squared. So if I want to take a number and try and figure out how to convert it to base 60, I have to take the number and divide it by a power of 60. So 5,217 is bigger than 60. So I'm going to try dividing it by 60 squared. And if I do that, it goes into it one time with the remainder of 1,617. So that remainder is important because then I need to write, okay, how many 60s are there in that 1,617? So that gives me, when I divide by 60, a 26 with a remainder of 57. So that's 57 ones because I have nothing else to divide. I can't divide 57 by 60 and get a whole number. So basically, when I'm converting between number systems, I'm teaching students how to divide with remainders. So you're going to start off with the largest power, so it goes into it one time. So watch this. One time with a remainder of 1,617. 60 goes into that 26 times, so I have 26 with a remainder of 57, and that 57 can't be broken down any further, so there's no symbols there. So that's what we're teaching students is how to convert. The Mayan number system uses dots, which is kind of an interesting system, and it also makes a lot of sense, right, because each dot represents an item. So 3 is written as 3 dots. 12, though, is written as 2 fives and 2 ones. So this is an interesting system because we're not using powers of 10, we're using powers of 5. So for instance, when I look at this, there's that space. So I know that I have 4 and 2 fives in the dot system. And then I have two dots and another one above another line, and there's a space between them. So to get to 154, I have to recognize that I'm in a different base. These are not base 10. This is a different base. So when I do it, I get 154 because I have seven 20s. I have four 1s. So seven 20s plus 14 1s gives me the number that I'm looking for. The next place value after 20 in the Mayan system is not 20 squared. So the Mayan system is very difficult to work with. We don't typically work with it. Um, 
but this is a good example to show you of how we use the Mayan system. So logistically, most base systems, your tens place would be whatever the base is. So if it's base 20, it's the 20. If it's 80, it's an 80. And then the next place value for the hundreds becomes 80 squared, 50 squared, 20 squared, whatever your base number is squared. But the Mayan number system does not operate that way, which is why it's one of the most intriguing number systems we have.